Hello dear friends, my name is Moses and today I'm here with sister Kathy. Hello, my name is Kathy Wenz. I'm an American and living in Thailand now. Happy to be here today. Nice to have you here. So sister Kathy, as we all know that you work in Thailand, so I would like to ask you like how long have you been in Thailand and what kind of work do you do for Thai people? I've been in Thailand for 19 years now and I came to Thailand um, with the intention of beginning to share about Jesus Christ with the Thai people. There's very limited opportunity and very few people in Thailand actually know who Jesus is, who God is, and um, my heart in coming here was to help Thai people know that and uh, pray that some of them would receive Jesus Christ as we share the gospel with them. So, uh, like, I would like to ask you a question, like, how easy or hard it is to teach them about uh, Christianity and, like, how difficult it is to explain questions because, as we all know, that Thailand is a Buddhist country. Mm -hmm. So, is it an easy job or, like, it, it, it is time-taking? Yeah, I'd say it's a very difficult job. Um, Thai people are very proud to be Buddhist and they have a long history of um, independence. So they're, they're the only country in Southeastern Asia where they've never been overtaken by communism or been colonized by anybody. So they're very proud of who they are and they identify, part of their identity is being Buddhist. So um, a Christian religion is seen as a foreign religion and even though they don't know much about it, they're just a little bit uh, maybe closed just because it's seen as, as foreign. Um, there's been Protestant mission work in Thailand for about 200 years or so. There's still very limited growth here. There's uh, less than 1% of Thai people are, are Christians. Um, Bangkok, it's like 0.4% of ethnic Thais are Christian, so it's, it's a lot of challenges. Um, Thai people are not generally seeking of spiritual truth or questioning things. They generally just follow traditions, um, follow their parents, follow their families, and it's just very, Buddhism is very much just a part of their family tradition, part of their culture. Um, so yeah, there's lots of obstacles but uh, we use a tool of teaching English as a, a way to begin to build friendships with Thai people and share the gospel with them slowly over time. And like, um, as I know that you're a foreigner living in a foreign country, like what kind of difficulties did you face in this period of 19 years that you spent here? Uh, yeah, well, for any foreigner going to a different country where, where um, English isn't the national language or the main language, probably the number one difficulty is the language barrier. Um, that's true if you go any, anywhere, yeah. any country in the world. So I've studied Thai and I can communicate, can communicate in Thai, but not so well. I'm, not, I'm far from being fluent, even though I can hold conversations with people. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just a little bit, for me, a little bit frustrating, I guess, when I can't do everything on my own like I could in, a, in my home country, mm -hmm. from just practical things, many things I need help with, or um, understanding the law, understanding the news, understanding lots of things. But I feel comfortable here just for day-to-day -day relationships, that kind of thing. Um, so number one problem would be the language barrier, I would say. Sure. And like with that, I want to know the procedure that you go through when you're trying to reach out to someone. Like do they reach out to you that I need help with my English? Or like do you go to Thai people and reach out to them and you you can be like you know, hey I'm here to help you with your English or something like that so what's the procedure of reaching out to people 
Yeah, well, uh, um, there's just a general hunger in Thai people, especially uh, high school students, university students, young working professionals to learn English. And there are a lot of English schools in Bangkok and all over Thailand, so we're not unique in that sense. But we do have our own ministry, we have our own language school. And so we advertise and mm -hmm. we, we you know, promote through our, our website, Facebook page, and we're known, I guess, through word of mouth. People tell their friends and tell their relatives. So we've been, the ministry has been going for more than, more than 25 years now. And so we have somewhat of a name. Um, so people come to us mm -hmm. because they want to learn English. Mm -hmm. And we do the best job that we can to really help them improve their English skills. And when they see themselves improve and so happy at our, at our, at our school, at our ministry place, you know, they tell their friends. Mm -hmm. And they say, wow, you have a really good price. And we feel like it's such a family here. Mm -hmm. And they meet friends in the class. They become friends with their teacher. They just have a great experience. So um, that hasn't been too much of a problem. But now, now it's some hard times because of COVID, you know, and our student enrollment is pretty low now. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I know you personally, and I know that uh, you wrote a book. So I would like to ask you, like, what was the idea behind it? Like, where did it come from? Like how and why what is the reason that you thought that i should write something what is there, why did i write my book yeah yeah well the name of my book is faith beauty and a bicycle glove tan and it's a collection of stories from a cross country bicycle trip that my university roommate and i took after we graduated and uh, we went we bicycled from my hometown st paul minnesota to the East Coast, the Atlantic Ocean, to the state of Maine, and then we took a ferry to Nova Scotia. So total total miles were was uh, 2,900 miles for the summer trip, bicycling, and we carried everything we needed on our bicycles, tent, sleeping bag, and a couple pair of shorts, a couple t-shirts, and that's it for the summer. And I had the intention that I just wanted to grow in my faith during that summer trip because there was no schedule just complete open time we had our route but we didn't schedule even where we would stay every night and so we just had an amazing experience my friend became a christian on the trip and when i got home you know in my mind it was like wow so many amazing things happened someday i could write a book about this mm -hmm. but where do you start writing a book so then uh it was about seven years later, um, something happened and my mom, I was talking to my mom and my mom said, oh, tell me that story again. I said, oh, mom, you can't forget that story about the Baptist minister we met in Ohio. You can't forget that story. And mom said, oh, I forgot. Tell me again. And so I told her the story again and mom said, oh, wow. Yeah, that's so great. I forgot that. You must write that down. I said, oh. That's okay, you know, and mom said, no, you have to write that down because it's a great story and whenever there's a testimony, you should write that down to the glory of God. And also, you might forget it someday. I said, oh, mom, I'll never forget that. And, you know, we ended our conversation and the next day at work, just thought about what mom said, mm -hmm. kind of just working in my heart, working in my heart, and I thought, yeah, I should try and write that down. So, so, it's like so, so then I started, so I just wrote, I wrote, I started a story in the middle of the book, uh -huh. which now is in the middle of the book. Uh -huh. And I wrote that down and felt really good and to write that and uh -huh. mom loved it. And then I just thought, you know, I could write my next most favorite story from that trip. Yeah. And then I wrote another story. Uh -huh. And then I thought, well, that was kind of fun. I could write this story. You know, and then I wrote like five or six, and then it was in my mind, well, maybe I could try and write a book and see if there's a collection of stories that I could put together with the beginning and with the end. And I kind of thought about it, and I'm like, well, I do kind of have a story from every point along our trip. 
So it's a collection of stories which together make the book about our bicycle trip.